Okay, uh, and an answer to, can I get the sound of that ocean down? I can't, but I can certainly get the sound of me up. So here we go again, another beach walk. And uh, welcome, as you've probably recognized over the past few videos, I have been promoting a, my next book called Biogenesis. Uh, it will be specifically about the microbiome and the gut health. As it turns out, it has a direct effect on the ability to reduce the amount and rate of accumulation of senescent cells. Let me explain. As it turns out, if you're eating the wrong foods and you have a series of false signals, mimetopes sometimes called, that react with sensors on the, on the epithelial wall surface, they get the wrong signal to open up the gaps between the cells and the sewage flows right into the bloodstream which sits right underneath these cells because, like all cells, they have to be an extra bloodstream for nutrients and oxygen. So if it gets out of those cells, it gets all over the body. That's not good because that kind of stuff, the stuff in there, bacterial, metabolic byproducts, interleukins, antigens, antibodies, all this stuff gets sent all over the body to cells that don't need those signals at all. In fact, we'd like to prevent it. And uh, those cells get damaged, they get hurt, they end up re replicating so many times they can't replicate because their telomere attrition is so high that uh, they can't reproduce, they en end up as a zombie cell if they just don't die. Typically they don't. They become a type of inflated fat cell with about five times as much mitochondria as a normal cell. Five times as much mitochondria takes five times as much resources the body is making in a 24 hour period. So when you look at it that way, the increase in senescent cells is directly proportional to the decrease in NAD due to a decrease in available resources being devoted to these sick mutant cells. The way to prevent it is by keeping your microbiome happy, eating the right foods, and uh, you know, doing the right thing. Of course, one of the things you can also do to help is activate NAD plus for yourselves. Resveratrol does that. There's a five-fold increase in NAD plus synthesis in the cycle to recycle NAD in the cells. And look at this picture. That, in fuchsia, is a resveratrol molecule sitting on top of a sirtuin, sirt1, which means the resveratrol sits on the sirtuins to help activate NAD to activate the sirtuin. This is why it's incorrect to say resveratrol activates sirtuins. No, resveratrol sits on sirtuins, activates NAD plus to activate the sirtuin, and they all seven get it. So when you take resveratrol, you get an activated sirtuin system that deacetylates, reacetylates, does all the stuff sirtuins are supposed to do. If not, bacteria, virus, and problems have their way with your cells. So the visit in 1000 gives you a thousand milligrams, you know, those are two caps, a thousand milligrams of transresveratrol, which is a resveratrol that actually does the work. It also is fat soluble, so you must take it with a healthy fat, coconut oil, olive oil, even yogurts, okay? Keeper. Take it that way. But you gotta take it with a healthy fat. So the idea here is life extension by youth regeneration. You know, I want to make you too young to die from old age. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just keep walking the beach and have a nice, nice walk while there's still a little bit of a hazy sun out. And I will talk to you tomorrow, but I'm going to be focusing on this topic. What to do about the microbiome, how to eat properly, how it fits into the Phoenix protocol, and eventually into a biogenesis. Perfect. See you later.